Welcome to the GameDev.TV Community Podcast. I'm your host, KB, and I would like to introduce you to industry professionals and people who successfully made their path to the video game industry. I hope that you will enjoy the podcast and get useful tips that will bring you closer to achieving your dreams. Now, let's get right into the podcast. Yeah, welcome to the uh, GameDev.TV Podcast. Awesome, man. Thanks for having me. So uh, just get started, let the fans know a little bit about who you are, and we'll go from there. Sure, sure. My name is Kyle. Um, I'm a C-sharp programmer, Unity developer. Mm -hmm. Uh, My game studio is Engine Organic with two of my buddies. Okay. And we're creating a first-person shooter multiplayer VR game. That's awesome. Can't go wrong with VR games. Now let's... Yeah. uh... (laughs) Let's dive into when you started doing game development. So is this something you were always into like when you were younger or is it something else that happened later on? What's the story there? Yeah, so um, always been, you know, super into games. Uh, my parents played games growing up. So, you know, as a kid, I was playing Tekken with my dad and um, just other Nintendo games and stuff. Um, and then... In 2001, my mom signed me up for a uh, like a little game maker class. So uh, Game Maker was the program, and it's it's actually still around today, but it's kind of like drag and drop coding. Yeah, you know, it's just like scratch kind stuff. of. You put it in there, and it works, and you're like, okay, cool. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to work worry about logic or anything. Exactly. You don't so. know what's really going on. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> um, so yeah, this little course kind of just like sparked my my interest and um, made games for a little bit after that. But of course, you know, I was like 12 years old, kind of hit like a little technological limit there, you know? So, um, and of course, like the internet back then, not what it is now. You can't, you couldn't just like go and look up any issue that you had, you know? Yeah, there was um, no documentation. So I just you were kind of in the dark. Yeah, yeah. So I, I like hit a wall. Uh. Um, I you know I got a little bit through some of the issues, but you know there was a point where it was just like, I'm I'm 12. <laughs> I can't figure this out. Um, wow, 12 so, years old. So you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, it kind of took a backseat for a bit at that point. Um, and then the next major thing was in high school. Actually, I took a game dev course and um it was based on flash and action script so i'd actually been messing with flash for a bit because i loved newgrounds and all the little internet cartoons and stuff like that so um that was like really my first uh actual programming that i did was with action script and uh yeah i made some pretty cool stuff with that so for um, anyone getting started with programming, like what were some difficulties you ran into yeah. and what would you have done differently? Um, let's see. It was a little tricky because the course that I took, it was a game dev course. Uh, and I'm sure nowadays, like these classes are probably more uh, legit, more helpful. But, you know, the teacher... He wasn't anybody who was in the industry or anything like he knew programming stuff, but for like game dev stuff, he, he couldn't really help us that much. Um, so, I mean, for other people starting out, they may have a teacher who's like way more versed in what they're doing. Yeah. For me, it was kind of like I had questions. He didn't really have answers, you know? Oh, that's wrong. Um, how, how can you have a teacher and not have the answers? Or at least help you, like, think through them. Yeah, well, and, like, again, like, the school kind of just assigned this guy yeah. to the course, oh, okay. you know. They weren't, like, looking for, for game dev people. They were like, okay, this guy's the most qualified, so we're going to have him teach the Most course. qualified, sure. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but for starters out, I mean, nowadays you have so many resources, so many ways to, like, help yourself get unstuck that it's, like, if you ever hit a wall – just really reach out to people, look for resources. Um, Google is your best friend, you know, like you can get through these, these issues way easier. And also the technology is a bit easier to work with too. So. 
Um, what would you advise people? different from when I started. True. What would you advise people to focus on when you're trying to do programming? Because most people be like, oh, hey, I want to make this game. And they forget all the like memory management. They forget about the algorithms and data structures. And they're like, look, I just followed this course. I built this game. But it's like, you don't actually understand the fundamentals. So how did you like learn? Yeah. And what would you advise other people? Yeah, that's, that's a tricky one too, because it takes a while, a couple of years to, to really get used to the fundamentals and like the, the design patterns and everything like that. It's a lot of trial and error. So for most people, I wouldn't, I'd say don't get too caught up on that to begin with. Um, <clears throat> you can always go back and refactor your code as you need. Um, you kind of got to find that line between over-engineering the crap out of something and like That's a key making one. something so prototypey that it's just like a bunch of random stuff, you know? Um, so that's, that's a tough line to tread, but you know, you don't want to have something that's so over-engineered that you try to come back to it and you have to change all this stuff now. Um, it's kind of one of the strategies I do is, oh yeah, yeah. No, that's terrible. I like to get the functionality that I desire and, you know, kind of make sure that I'm able to do this thing. And then I take a step back and I say, okay, how do I make this as smart as it can be? Um, kind of clean it up of course you don't want to get too far before you clean up but but it's a bit of a one step foot a one foot forward than the next foot process for me personally now were there any moments we felt really stuck where you were like these resources aren't helping me or school isn't helping me like how can i actually improve my program yeah so i'd say i hit that a couple points um so actually to continue a bit on the game dev journey side of things. Um, so I did that class in high school. Uh, it was, it was really awesome. I love the class, but from there, I didn't really have much to go to. Um, I took a programming class in college and it just really killed my motivation. It was like creating basic applications. There was no art, there was no creativity. And I mean, I was 19. So at this time I was like, is this what I really want to do for the rest of right? my life? You're like, this and is that kind of like push. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that pushed me off of it for a couple of years. And then I finally got back into it in 2017. I Whoa, took you said a couple of years. Camp. How many years are we talking? So I took that, that college course when I was 19, um, just stopped. I was like, okay, hard stop. I'm done with this. Um, and I just, I left it until I was about 26. So um, seven I years just kind of was like, yeah, what? I know. <laughs> and I mean, it's crazy. Cause at this, there was a lot of moments during this time where I was like thinking about game dev and I was like, man, I should have stuck with it. Maybe I still can, but I felt like it was too late. I felt like I missed it and I was getting too old, but you know, I got back on it when I was 26 and it just came right back to me and I just took off, you know, I definitely wish that I had kept going for those seven years, but you know, I kind of needed a bit of a kick to, to bring me back to it, you know? So what were you doing for those seven years? Um, um, so at first, so when that programming class kind of took me out and I was like, maybe that's not what I want to do. I decided, you know, maybe art is actually what I really want. And so I decided to go for a graphic design major. Um, and then with that, I realized, oh, art is something that I do for me. And like, it's, it's like a stress relieving activity. But when I'm doing it in this setting, it's very stressful. <laughs> you know, like, I feel like I'm not good enough. I feel like it takes me forever to complete the smallest thing. Um, and so I stopped with the graphic design stuff as well. So when did you start the graphic um, design? Is this like after your four years of college or? No, was this was right after the, that programming class. So I was still in college. Okay. Um, I just decided to stop programming because I hated the class that I took. Um, and to be honest, the art classes I took after that, I really hated also. 
God. So, How did you get through these seven years? Yeah. <laughs> what was your I know, what was I know. You going? <laughs> like, I hate this, I hate that. What am I doing? With my well, life? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's the thing. Like, I was so like unsure what I wanted. And like, I also loved to make music too at the time. So I just had all these like opposing forces. Um, and I kind of had to, had to like go through the motions of, you know, like, uh, you know, getting crappy jobs and not being where I wanted to be. And then finally coming full circle and realizing like, no, computers are where you need to be. And game dev is where you need to be. Okay. So we have to dive deep into that. How did you reach that moment? How did you know, like, <laughs> screw these crappy jobs. This is the moment yeah. I need to do game dev. So actually there was a time, uh, 2015, my girlfriend and I took a trip to Vegas with some friends and, uh, we were chilling on Vegas for a bit. And I remember at that time I was working in a kitchen as a cook. Um, and you know, just, just barely getting by That's no savings, tough. really very tough. 40 hours a week um, probably. Nonstop yeah, exactly. Really hard work. Like we were in a really busy area too. So, you know, it was nonstop all the time. Um, and I hated it, but, um, so we were in Vegas and I remember at this one moment, just kind of looking around, seeing all these people who like, clearly they have enough money to just like take a weekend trip and not have to worry about anything. And they can go right back to their job and everything's fine. You know, Vegas was, was just like, Vegas will do that to you. <laughs> yeah right yeah, wait exactly. a minute. what am i doing wrong yeah. why yeah why is there like, i'm party? so broke yeah. <laughs> so I, at that moment i was kind of just like man i like i can't do restaurants anymore i have to get back into like technology first of all like programming um and that just really lit the fire underneath and i just i had to get out and get back into the programming so when you got back into it, what was this like a class going back to school? Yeah. Courses? So I kept looking for like game dev courses, you know, uh, I was trying to find something that would just take me. I didn't want to go back to school and do four years and have to do all the classes. I like really just wanted to get into the game dev. Um, so luckily I found one and even luckier than that, it was actually the last one that they were doing. So it was I didn't know at the time, but it was my last chance to do this, but no got way, into this what? game, what this? of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was this three month course, like so, so intense, like at least 60 hours of work a week. Like we are nonstop. Wow. How much um, does this cost? 60 hours a week. Um, a yeah. Right. It was like, it was like 6,000 or something like that. It was actually cheap compared to most boot camps um 6000 cheap <laughs> i know right i mean the most ones i were looking at it was like 10 to 18000 was pretty common that's wild to me so, like, just drop 18000 and maybe you'll have a job afterwards yeah <laughs> right well lucky for us in the course uh, our teacher is somebody who like knows everybody in the industry in this local area so he had all these connections got me a job basically right out of the course and so that was, that was pretty mind blowing to me from, it was like a five month process to go from I'm a server to now I'm coding and creating virtual reality for a living. Wow. Um, so those five months, what really made it click for you? Was it that fire and you were just like, I have to get this job. So you just constantly yeah. doing like, yeah. So that fire really is what carried me through. Um, I remember take starting this course and probably 80% of the people there were like either fresh out of high school or like their parents are kind of putting them into this. Um, they probably weren't coming from the same experience that I had where I was like, I need this, you know, yeah. they, <laughs> they like, had that Vegas experience where they were like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're all like out of high school, like, Oh yeah, I'll make game. Sure. Um, and so that's another thing is I knew a lot of what it took to actually make games and it's not easy. So a lot of these kids kind of got wrecked, <laughs> you know, like two weeks in, they're already way behind. And like, so I knew exactly what it was going to take and I prepared myself for the course. So I wouldn't be just completely fresh going in. Um, 
me and probably two or three others really, really put the time and the effort in and uh, it really paid off. Um, well, that's awesome to hear. And yeah. I'm curious. So like, so you're saying getting prepared before the uh, boot camp. I think that's really key because for instance, I've been taking some programming classes and because I've been yeah. studying on my own, I feel like I'm so, I, l- I listen more, I care more. I actually understand what's going on instead of being lost. But right. how can someone do that if they don't really know? Like, hey, like, I'm going to go take this programming course. Like, how should I prepare myself? Yeah, yeah. See, I was lucky because we actually had pre-course material. And so they were like, learn all this before you come to the class. It's going to save everybody time. Um, and, you know, so they they got us through all the basic stuff. Um, and then there was also, like, some extra stuff if you completed all that. So, it was pretty much like get as far as you can and then we'll start it out on day one or whatever. And I'm curious, but, what is all that stuff? Is it like learning what variables are? Yeah. So like data types is mm-hmm. the, like one of the first ones. Um, really simple, you know, if, if else statements, uh, just going through the syntax of we were learning C sharp. So kind of just learning the basic rules of C sharp um, and getting used to like, you know, writing hello world in the console and all the little simple things. Um, actually, one of the things that really helped me even before this, before I even had any pre-course material, I just decided to start on a random game dev tutorial on YouTube. And so when is it Brackies? <laughs> I actually wasn't Brackies, but Brackies is like one of my favorite. Mm-hmm. This was um, Games Plus James is this Ooh, guy. Okay. Never heard of him. Um, and we were making like a kind of like a old school Zelda style game. Um, and, you know, through this tutorial, you learn some basic coding, but you also learn some basic animator stuff and you learn like how to create a sprite sheet and there's like countless useful things I learned from this tutorial that I didn't expect. So, you know, starting doing some of these beginning tutorials, even if you aren't necessarily like a brand new beginner, you will learn a lot of stuff that you wouldn't have expected to learn. No, that's really um, true because there's so many things to game dev. I, I yeah. think that has a joke now that game dev is actually harder than rocket science because like animation, <laughs> audio, programming, <laughs> writing, and yeah. program it's just like what <laughs> right and a lot of it's subjective too you know it's like mm-hmm. yeah what yeah. is fun it's like depends right on exactly the, uh, the genre who your totally. audience is so mm-hmm. okay Absolutely. so now this boot camp was it just programming or was it also game dev like combined it was so it was a good mix of both okay. um my instructor julian he wanted us like he wanted us to know pretty much everything about unity uh, he also wanted us to be prepared to get just a programming job uh, because it's much harder to just go from boot camp to game dev. You know, you kind of got to get lucky. Yeah. Or, yeah you know. Especially the trying odds, to go to those big studios. Especially the big studios. Like the odds aren't in your favor there. So he was like, all right, I'm going to teach these guys databases, you know, briefly. Because that is like one of the top like entry jobs, you know, you'll, you'll be working with databases. Um, when you say databases, was, you mean like working with like arrays or working like with SQL or both or so SQL specifically. Okay. Yeah. So the external database where companies will store all their information. And, um, that's a pretty standard. Oh, so you're basically like, doing entry. like using C sharp with SQL to yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's we did that for like, you know, three days, but in crash course time, that's like a month. <laughs> So you, wait, uh, you said three days, but you did three months yeah. of work in three days. Well, I, it kind of <laughs> feels like it, right? <laughs> but the, these courses are so short that like every segment is a couple of days, but it feels like it just lasts forever, you know? Okay. So for um, me, it's feel, feel like if I rush things, it's harder for me to like retain the information. So how did you yeah. retain all this information being thrown at you in these days? Um, so, that even works <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of the stuff, uh, it's kind of selective, to be honest. Like we did a little bit where we were doing some networking stuff. And this was like really uh, kind of low level networking where we were actually like like manually sending the data over the network and re- retrieving it. Nowadays, there's tools where it's much easier for you. 
I, I don't remember any of that, to be honest. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. It's like, oh, good stuff, but like, oh, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But a lot of times, like, you learn it a bit, and then you kind of have enough in your head to know what to look for when you want to use that so that's again. That's usually key. There's always documentation, but to know where to start right. is the key point. Yeah. Right. And, like, so, like, for me, like, taking notes during this course just to, like, have keywords in there. Like, okay, when you want to learn how to do this, look up this word, you know? um that kind of helps too uh but yeah like naturally with these crash courses unfortunately you're not going to be able to retain everything for that long but for me personally i learned a lot and i immediately was able to use that uh in a job so and so what were some of the things you're creating were you just making small games small applications? so this company was actually more focused on vr like kind of vr video was a big focus on it um this guy he really wanted to do vr video mixed with uh computer graphics stuff um which sounds feasible <laughs> but it's course, pretty hard no. when you have two eyes for the video so each video has basically two angles that are composed into one to give you that 3d look and then you have That's computer true. graphics in there and it's just a nightmare. <laughs> like it's really hard. No, I bet. <laughs> so like, but how do you wrap your head around that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of the a lot of the like tasks were kind of impossible, you know. But um <laughs> Is that why some no. people got wrecked? They're like, you can't do this, it's not possible. <laughs> well, so that was the course, and we actually didn't do any VR in the course. Um but so this was actually my first job after that. We were creating the, the VR video stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. So let's get into that. So how was that job like? And it was awesome. You, was like the first day, were you completely overwhelmed? Nervous? I was, I was a bit overwhelmed for sure. Mm -hmm. I was uh, kind of unsure what was going to happen, you know, but it, it felt pretty nice because within that first week, I was able to like apply my knowledge and uh, do something useful with it. So, you know, I was already like proving my worth within the first couple of days, I'd say. Um, Must have felt nice not having to start tables anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's, I know. And actually, at this time, I was still serving mm -hmm. because I was like, and especially because this new company was a startup. So I was like, I don't want to get too like attached to this. And then it's just like gone, you know? You know, so that was, was like, you're like, I got my yeah. job, and then they fire you, and you're like, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to fall back on. Right, right. But oh. it, there comes a moment, too, you probably have like a, a mindset shift where you're like, wow, I'm actually making more money doing less, it feels like, because you're not constantly running yeah. around dealing with, yeah. You're yeah, like, it didn't feel like back. work. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel like work at all, because I, I was having fun, and I was getting to be really creative, and I wasn't moving around very much. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, it was, it was really quite an interesting change, for sure. And did you have a moment where, like, it went from the fire being there because you the restaurant job to, like, this is just fun. I want to keep doing it every day. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it was a really good feeling being able to, to quit that serving job eventually when I was like, okay, like, not only do I have, like, a little bit of a savings account buffer right now, but, like, I am more confident in this company. I'm more confident in my own skills. And uh, yeah, that fire just kind of turned into like uh, just a passion to, to keep growing and learning and continuing. Awesome. And so let's get yeah. into like the day-to-day -day maybe of like that VR job. So yeah, where yeah. exactly, what's the place called again? So our studio is called Engine Organic. Engine Organic, okay. Yep, if you go to engineorganic.com, you'll see our website there. Ooh, you were gonna get put hacks? First yep, person that's shooter with game. the Oculus. Okay, yep. so let's go before we get into the job. What is Hacks? What so Hacks is a futuristic first person shooter VR multiplayer game. Um, Whoa, it's not multiplayer no yet. Okay. <laughs> uh, we're working on multiplayer right now, but we have a single player demo out. Uh, it's been out since March. Uh, and at this point we have around forty-two thousand downloads. So um, it's going well. Uh, we're building a little community. And yeah, it's just been a blast, man. It's been a really good time. 
that's been my my life for a year and a half at this point so so when you started this project was it um like from scratch prototype no like it wasn't started yet yeah this was completely from scratch um we spent probably three months doing like a lot of research tests and figuring out the art style figuring out like how many vertices can we get away with um we're targeting the oculus quest so it's where it's running on a mobile device which you don't have very much power with a mobile yeah, device no, it's, not, it's not a ps5 uh, or a high powered pc yeah <laughs> yeah no real time lighting no bloom which if you don't know bloom is makes things glowy uh 90 of the time you, the graphics look good is because of bloom and we don't have that so we've had to get pretty creative to uh keep things looking up to par and, and it's paid off too to we share, get a lot like, of people saying that yeah. well, i was gonna say if you could share what are the, some of the things you did to make it look good like what how did you find these solutions to the problem like of not having bloom sure um so we have the benefit of having a world-class artist on our team Can't we're very lucky that one. Um, <laughs> yeah so like this guy, he knows exactly how everything needs to be done. Um, and he's very meticulous. He's very um, process oriented. You know, he's got a very like mechanical mind. Um, and it really just took a lot of trial and error and like trying out texture sizes, trying out model sizes. Um, just months of creating stuff, going on a headset, saying, does this look right? Okay, no, go back. Just months of that. Wow. And the exact specifics too, I don't really uh, know too much, but he, I mean, he put the work in to, to get everything to look perfect. That's, that's insane. I wonder how um, he got all to that like mindset. Yeah. Must have been years and years of studying and just experience. Well, he took he took a really good course so this wasn't like a crash course really um but it was more like a really really legitimate art school i think it's the dave school for arts i think that's what it's called um but you know like show like producers for tv shows were going to the school to like, poach the students and like you know like actual big names were coming to get these these guys and I you know think Dave, Dave is an artist he was uh I think it's in Florida. Pretty sure the Dave. No way, really. Dave's Where in Florida? Florida Arts, okay. it's by uh, Sailview. That's a good. That's a good question. Let me look it up real quick. Dave School. Yeah, uh, in the back lot of Universal Studios, Florida. No way, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I gotta go visit <laughs> my two hours. Yeah, away from it, like. <laughs> nice man yeah you, you should go check it out um very prestigious art school like he learned exactly what to do exactly what not to do um and actually i think right right from that class he got uh picked up by this show i think it was discovery called uh why planes crash i think is what it's called okay. um that's an interesting documentary and it was, or he, show. he was doing like yeah, he was doing like modeling of planes and like had to do all this plane crashing stuff. But um, he, yeah, he like, our game would not look anywhere near as good as it does without him. <laughs> so. The game looks really cool. I saw you can like hide behind an object and then throw a tomahawk. It just looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. It's so, kind of like a battle royale. That's one game. thing. Can you guys get it done? Um, so we're not really thinking about battle Royale at this moment. Um, and honestly, I feel like by the time we get to the point where we we have it, the multiplayer live battle Royale may just be like a thing of the past, you know, honestly, maybe yeah. everybody's like, yeah, <laughs> the games are like Fortnite or like another big ones. And it's like, you really can't beat it. Right. Right. Well, and also it's like, at this point, you put a game out with Battle Royale and you potentially will just get criticism for people to be like, oh God, another Battle Royale. Like, can't you think of something new? Um, so we kind of just wanted to stick to like the arena style shooter. 
um, we have esports in mind, so we really would like to get to a good like competitive arena shooter level. So I'm curious, how, how long do you guys think you'll be working on this game? Is this like supposed to be like a long term game that's gonna eventually blow up? Be this new VR, like the first wave of VR games, multiplayer games. Yeah, so we want to work on this as long as we can. Um, Let's see, we started last April, very start of this game. Uh, We're planning to have basically like the alpha release version ready this December-ish. So that'll be like a very stripped back version of what will be the final game. It'll have multiplayer, it'll have unlocks and some very basic stuff. Um, but then we're going to spend all of next year refining, adding so much content, uh, you know, just doing everything we can to make it the best game it can be. And we're hoping for a full release uh, that December. So December 2022 is our like full release. Oh, okay. And then from there, I'm of course, we're going to be, yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> We'll be updating, uh, adding stuff. You know, we're just we're gonna try to keep this game alive as long as we can. And I'm curious, is there been any difficulties you guys didn't expect, or even you just were like, "Wow, I didn't know this was gonna happen." While we'll making this game, yeah, I mean, maybe not so much unexpected, but like creating the character was pretty difficult. Um, Cause you know, with a traditional game, you don't have to worry about tracking your hands and your body and making everything look right. In VR, where we have our our body rig that follows our movements, you know, um, we want to be able to control smoothly, just like any other game would. And you know, there's just a lot of little issues there that can arise, um, and just like also the some of the the assets that we got to like build off of, um, you know, sometimes you buy an asset and it works for the most part, but you got to get into their code and you got to make some changes to, to make things work. And we've had to do that quite a bit, uh, which is pretty difficult <laughs> yeah. when you don't really know the code that? very well. <laughs> yeah. Were you the one that was like responsible going yeah, in so there? Yeah, so pretty much. Damn, it must have taken weeks. Yeah, like, for the most part. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like our NPC system for the the AI, we bought this thing. We didn't realize that it was made for just like us, a one person to be attacked by all these robots, you know, or the the AIs. So we had to restructure it so that they would attack each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like more than one target. And, you know, so there's just a lot of like little issues that happen when you try to mess with other people's code. But um, I mean, for the most part, like any issue that we've come across, we've been able to tackle. So, and that feels really good, like getting stuck on something for a week and then you push through and it's it's gone. No, that must be a great feeling. You're like, yes, we finished it. I don't have to worry about it anymore. It's there, it's done. Good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So then what's the yeah. day-to-day like working at, um, what's it called, engine bed? Engine, Engine organic. organic. Yeah. It's what's is yeah. it like remote um, or is it not remote? And like was it different than what like the boot camp? Yeah. Kind of like the boot camp. Uh so we are all remote. Um Davey and I, the artist Davey and I are spread across Colorado. And um the other programmer, he's up in Montana. So and uh we've been remote now for since the very beginning of the pandemic, we've been remote. So this game has been made entirely remote, which is pretty wild. Um, it is wild, but it shows you can do but, it. I know, right? Yeah, we were skeptical at first of you know what we were gonna encounter, but you know there's there's ups and downs with it. You know, like sometimes I'm better at focusing when it's just me and I'm just like chilling by myself. Other times, you know, like you want to collaborate and like toss ideas back and forth. It's a little difficult over the phone, but um, the day to day is pretty uh, varied. We always start our day with pretty much a one hour uh, meeting uh, and we work Monday to Friday. We try to have a, a 40 hour ish work week. Um, 
but you know, we start a day, we talk about what we're going to do. We talk about what we did previously. Uh, something that's really, really important that a lot of beginning game devs just kind of overlook or you don't think it's a huge thing to do, but you know, staying on the same page and making sure that you're, uh, you know, handling the tasks that you were trying to handle in a good manner. Uh, it's really, really important. Um, so we do that meeting and then we usually, we, we each have a list of tasks to take care of. Um, being a small team, you know, each, each of us has a lot to do. So, you know, a lot of the programming stuff, I'll just, no matter what it is, it falls in my, my lap. Um, Christian, the other programmer, he does a lot of work on optimization and like testing stuff. And he'll come back to our artists and say, Hey, I need you to chop a thousand tries off of this model, you know, or like we need to close this angle up. So he's like extremely meticulous with optimization and making stuff run super smooth. Um, and I'm like the functionality guy. Okay. So sounds like you had a good um, team, good, good set of, uh, like, yeah. strategies to handle all the workload yeah and we're all like different enough in skill set to like be complementary you know we don't have too much overlapping skills so that's that's a good thing cool and so that's i fine. think we might have missed this but like this wasn't the job you got right out of the boot camp i think you might have got what like a reality garage was the first job out of boot camp yes okay yeah that's right reality garage um, was that game that's actually where i met these other two guys no, so Reality Garage was a little difficult to pinpoint exactly what it was, but <laughs> they did some oh, contract work. That's interesting. So, so like we did some contract work there. They're also developing their own in-house software. Um, and then near the end of us working there, they were trying to get really into like medical VR stuff. So we had a lot of variety there. Um, one of our cooler projects was creating a training program for um, developmentally disabled people to uh, learn these kind of um, basic tasks. Uh, so actually the context for this was uh, there was a brewery nearby that had like a bottling uh, operation going on. And so they'd hire, um, they'd hire like, well, they wouldn't hire, but they'd have people with disabilities come and help them to like uh, pack up these mix packs, basically. Um, and it was a good way for these people to get, you know, some job experience, uh, just all around benefits for them. But they had trouble uh, like learning, learning what to do beforehand. So basically, we created this program for them to be able to go in and like create these virtual mix packs and like go through the process before they even got to the place. Um, wow, that was a really a fun cool project. It was, yeah, it was, it was cool. It was, you know, virtual building a mix pack. Um, mm. But so that was a really cool one. Um, was it a big team? We did. There was, we had some, like some people would come on for a little and then they'd leave like for people from college or whatever. I'd say we probably floated around four to seven people usually. Um, and yeah, I mean, we had a blast there for sure that we occasionally were a little bit just like pulled in all these directions. Like, Oh, we got this project now and now we're still working on this. And like, that was a little tough. Um, especially mm -hmm. for, you ever feel like you had imposter syndrome working there? Because you were like, this is your first job. You were like, yeah. Ooh, do I know what I'm doing? This, did everybody For sure. Out? Yeah. What was that process like? Yeah. It, yeah. I definitely felt it a couple times, um, especially like joining this team. They already had a bunch of code. So I'm like kind of going into their code and adding stuff and like nervous, like, am I just going to break everything? You know? Oh, I bet you're like, oh no. Is also like good trying enough? to apply. <laughs> Right, right. Trying to like do design patterns, but like I barely had any experience with them. Um, so that was been so overall, hard. Overall, it was like, a really good design pattern, but like how to implement it, I'm not sure. Let me try to do it. My break code. Yeah. Like, yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, but it was a very good environment to learn and to uh, to just like pick other people's brains and uh, just kind of get the experience, you know. That's awesome here. They worked out for you. Um, and actually, so at that job, so that's where I met Christian and Davey, who I work with now. Um, and so when things fell apart at Reality Garage, we decided to keep working together and make our own little uh, game studio. Oh, I didn't realize it, it um, fell since apart. Since we had like been it's... working together for a year. So. Oh, like it no longer um, exists? It, or... Well, it, so it got turbulent and um, work was getting scarce and it just kind of, it kind of got, it, I don't think they fully dissolved, but you know, people were let go and um, yeah, stuff changed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it happens, but hey, it's good now because you guys have your own uh, studio. So you guys made this studio now called Engine. Uh... Right. Okay. Organic. Engine Organic. Yep. That's yeah. our, our company registered 2019. There you go. Um, well, and we actually Colorado. released another game before Hacks. Yeah. Um, what game was we that? actually released another um, it's called Sweet Tooth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so this Sweet one didn't Tooth do well out. at all. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so this this was an interesting story because um, basically one day before Reality Garage was over, we were kind of just like, can we make Flappy Bird, Flappy Bird VR? <laughs> and for some stupid reason, we decided to do it. And um, I mean, that's not a bad idea. Premise. Well, Happy Birds was good. Oh, no, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, Reality Grudge that ended for us. And we were kind of like halfway through making this game. And we were like, let's just finish it. You know, let's get it to a point where it's ready to ship and we'll put it on the store and we'll move on from there. Um, looking back, it's not a great idea to do that <laughs> because what seems like it'll be a quick thing to do. It took us months and months just finish to, the game. to finish it. So, no big deal. Yeah, Two months exactly. Later. Get it to a point later. where it was good enough. Yeah, exactly. So like we wasted time on that. I mean, it looks like, good. Lucky for us, we got... Thank you. That's that's Davey once again. He's the, the master of mm. visuals. Uh, and honestly, like we think it's a pretty fun game uh the first couple of levels are pretty boring so i feel like people just quit right away <laughs> mm, too but you have to get to like level six to actually yeah it's yeah you're kind of like going through level like is there any challenge here i don't know mm -hmm. but and so um, what other feedback do you guys get so, from that game so that's one of the things we it was like silence man like we didn't get barely anything no way like, really we put the game out on two platforms i think we have two reviews and like one of them's from our friend <laughs> so like silence no, completely yeah, yeah. we didn't even know how game? to make the game yeah. better yeah, yeah exactly where's my feedback they right, always say release right. more games and they'll give you feedback where is it <laughs> yeah so that is one thing that is just miles different from what hacks has been so far so like we released this free demo and instantly like comments, 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 feedback, like emails, you know, just like one of the first things that happened before we even tried to like push this demo at all, we had this really, really big, well, not really big, 10,000 follower VR influencer on Twitter. Maybe not really big, 10,000 followers yeah. is pretty big. <laughs> That's big for us, huge for us, for sure. Like relatively, uh, you know, not huge, but like for us, this guy found our game on his own and he made a video and like a Twitter post and, you know, all of a sudden our Twitter was blowing up and we didn't even like do anything and like, just woke up one day. So it kind of goes to show. <laughs> what do we yeah, do? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so a couple of lessons from that one, much easier to sell a game like hacks than a game like sweet tooth. Like there's no market for a game like sweet tooth, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it but, is true. You know, like, Sci-fi. Flappy Birds works as mobile, but like, are you are you gonna put a VR headset on while you're in a subway to play a VR and Flappy Birds? Or happy, yeah. Yeah. No. So no. Like, definitely not. 
And and also just like the style too, like it looks great and everything, but like who is that really trying to appeal to? You know, like mm -hmm. we're not sure. So something <laughs> that's like, funny. Hacks, like we're not sure. obviously. Yeah. Be <laughs> from that. Now you know, you're like, okay, who, what game are we actually making? It? Who are we making it for? And right. Move from there. Yeah. Right. So there's Absolutely. the feedback. And came also, silently. like, <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Like the feedback is, don't make this game. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh it's just been That's the opposite nice. for us with this like we have more feedback than we can even like utilize at this point um and it's great because like the players are helping us shape this game like they're finding stuff so early that we're able to fix and update in the next release you know like we're not going to have all these day one issues that a lot of games have because we're nailing all that out right now and so um, this is like so following really you good. have now, how are you using like Discord yeah. or some kind of like forum to keep connection with them? Yep. So Discord is our main thing right now. Our Discord is very active. Um, you know, we get, I like we barely even really push for it and we still get like a handful every day of new people. Um, and we have probably like two dozen like really diehards on there too, who are like always talking, always doing stuff. Um, we have like a bug report section. We have suggestions. We have user content. We have all these areas where people can interact and, uh, you know, post their own stuff too. Um, I'm yeah, curious, great, but has man. anyone in the community given you like their hopes and visions of like where they think the game's going to go? And is it a little bit like, is it too yeah. much for you guys? Or you're like, no, this is cool. We'll get there in like a year. Or we'll get there eventually. Yeah. So I'd say like some of our most common suggestions are stuff like, you know, like add a hook shot um, or I mean, a grapple hook, add I like a jetpack, yeah. add wall running. Ooh, well, yeah, for sure. Too, and like, yeah. Right, one of my favorite games of all time, Titanfall and Titanfall 2. Such fun games. Uh, like I love the locomotion. I would love to have that in our game. Um, obviously, the more kind of stuff you add like that, the more you have to balance it out yeah, true. and like create the levels around that. Like our levels right now are not built for you to be able to jetpack around or like. So it's you kind of have to really take those things into consideration. That has a lot of depth um, now to like level design. It's like, okay, cool, we have this level, but does it fit with jetpacks? Right, right. There's an area where only jetpack people can jump and run. So only people where people can wall run. Yeah. Is, is how are they going to use that? What are the different techniques? It's just it's crazy how much it could change the level design you're doing. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, we're like we're trying to really balance the meta with just like the weapons and attachments that we have. Um, and so we're adding a lot of attachments that make small tweaks to your weapon. And, you know, it's gonna add a lot of uh, variation to the gameplay. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we're focusing on for the most part is the weapon play um, before we really get into any like advanced locomotion stuff. So what kind of weapon play are we talking about? Like just a variety of different weapons or each weapon has like different attachments that allow you to do cool things? Yeah. So, I mean, all of our weapons right now, we have a bunch of scopes, uh, optics for them, but we are now starting to introduce like different uh, barrels. So like that'll influence the projectile speed, how much damage it does, how quickly you're able to shoot. Uh, you know, all these like micro changes that are going to help to just keep things fresh. Um, and we want that, like, we want the gunplay meta to be really like playful. And we just don't want everybody to pick the same exact gun and play with that, you know? We want like counters. And yeah, everything. no, that's the worst when you're playing like Call of Duty and everybody uses that one gun. And you're like, come on, change yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and VR actually offers us opportunities to, um, counter those types of things, you know, like making objects heavier to move around or like, uh, you know, you, you move a little slower. There's, there's a whole bunch of different ways we can um, change things up a bit. And then when it comes to multiplayer, yeah. have you guys run into any issues with like servers where you have like too many players playing or you like, how has that been designing a multiplayer game? 
Yeah, so, so far, um, it's definitely been a bit of a challenge. And I'd say mainly just because of our, our systems. Um, we have this magazine system where basically you can take a magazine and we just felt like a lot of VR FPS games, you have like your grenades here and your this over here and there's a knife down here, you know, like all this stuff and you got to remember where it is. And so we were like, nah, let's make it easy. You grab a mag from your chest, you press B, it's a grenade. You press trigger, it's a sword. So we turn our magazines into other weapons, basically. We want to make it... Um, Oh, that's really cool. Quick and easy. And is there like a reason for that? Uh, in this yeah, world? thank is you. Like um, magazines just switch like morph into whatever you need them to be. Yeah. So, um, hacks is the name of this like data juice. <laughs> it's like this liquid that can um, transfer data in in our world. So um, that's like what all the weaponry is. It's shooting the hacks. This like energy stuff. And when you like turn your magazine to a sword, it's like this hax uh, blade. So it's kind of it's kind of like a plasma type substance or whatever. Um, so that kind of helps it make sense in our world. But it was it was really just to like simplify the VR interaction and to just you know keep the focus on gameplay and not on all these like tricky little you know VR things going on. Yeah, no. Even though people want realistic, um, it comes a point when it's like. I just want it to be easy to, you know, play the game instead of fi right. finding myself and with where is the grenade? Oh, I picked the wrong thing and you die. And you're like, I don't want to play this yep. game. <laughs> That's probably our biggest thing when it comes to any design choice in this game. We early on decided there's simulations and then there's like game games, you know? And so there's like stuff where your gun, if you know how this gun works in real life, you have an advantage in other games, you know, because there's this little... There's all these little uh, finicky things you got to do. Um, and that, to us, like, that's not really very fun in, like, an arena shooter setting. We want to just, like, keep everything as simple as can be while still making you have to, like, grab something and reload, you know. So we try to stay away from the simulation area of things, and we want to yeah. stay more towards, like, Nintendo style gameplay. It doesn't need to know? be like Red Dead Redemption 2 where you spend like 10 seconds just like picking up a body, looking through the pockets. I'm like, I miss yeah, you. Right, right. like you got loot. <laughs> like, cool. I don't, don't need this. Yeah, game. exactly. It's just, it's just not the type of game. Like, for instance, Red Dead, it works. Sometimes yeah. it's like this takes way too long, but like it works. Right. For your game, though, it's like, yeah, it fits the game. Exactly. Because you said yeah, simulation and like, and like, game. Right. And like playing Half Life Alex, for instance, um, the guns, there's some stuff you got to do to reload and you're always low on ammo and it's like stressful. You're like messing with this, but it adds to the game because there's a head crab over there that's about to kill you. So you're like, oh God, you know, it's, it adds to that. It's like real life. You're like, I got to reload. Yeah, right, yeah. right. It, it just, it goes well with the game. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, that's, yeah. you guys learned from the uh, sweet tooth that like design process is really important and you like, does this absolutely. Game. That's really cool. Right, you learn from right. That. Is there any yeah, other things and you also picking from? something that yeah. uh, you know that people are going to want to play. Mm -hmm. You know, like, shooters. People love we shooters. Have a, yeah, <laughs> we had a million ideas for games, and we were like, we actually were considering making uh, a snowboarding game where you're a bunny. Uh, it was going to be called uh, Bunny Hill Hop Ski, something weird like that. that but, Would you use your bunny ears to <laughs> snowboard down? <laughs> potentially you know but uh we were just like i don't i don't know if it's just gonna it's not gonna create the hype that this that hacks will create so we we're like no yeah and that's one thing also for a game that's free and nobody like really hears about it and just play right like, yeah. right or like a game that can absolutely be huge and change everything maybe the next Fortnite. you never know mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's actually a really important thing for um aspiring game devs too i think i hear all the time people like with these super ambitious ideas or they're trying to like create this like a new genre basically or like really trying to like go outside the box and while that's really good and it's created some of the best games of all time when you're starting out like you really just got to ground yourself and tackle something 
that you know you can do and something that people are familiar with you know it's going to make your life so much easier mm -hmm. yeah we have a saying here so don't make wow because yes. people always want to make the biggest games they possibly make why not yeah. make an mmorpg yeah no don't don't do that right. your first game go make something simple exactly and like that's your usually when you start game dev you're like all right i'm making this epic thing you know like i want this to be yeah I've already hours, wrote the world, all like these the story yeah. the background i have the script history, everything yeah, character and you're like hold on where's the game yeah like yeah exactly like make mario make four levels and then you know finish it and move on <laughs> like, exactly yeah and then move on to the next thing but, the next thing take it slow take exactly it slow. Don't be too ambitious. You can yeah. make it maybe in the next 20 years, but not today. Because then you just yeah, don't go back right. to the courses. You don't come back. You lose your motivation. Yeah. So intimidating after a certain point when you're building yourself up like that. You know, you got to start easy. You got to start simple. I like this. Start easy. Start yeah. Why do people do the opposite? Why do they stare hard uh, and start so complex? I feel like I know right because it's more interesting i guess you know but shame yeah well hopefully we're here to tell <laughs> yeah. them not to do that guys you got this yeah right <laughs> so yeah <laughs> for our game dev that tv courses at the end of the lectures we do a challenge i was thinking you can come up with a challenge to finish oh. off this podcast with it could be anything it could be program related animation whatever you've come up with oh cool so you can just give a nice. small challenge um, take us enough time much time do you need to come up with a challenge? Yeah, man. Let's see. It's funny. I remember when I was taking my game dev course, there was a small game dev studio in the same building that we would like run into those guys occasionally. And we'd like talk to them a bit. Um, and one time we asked them like, what do you do for new hires? Like, how do you, how do you onboard people? And this guy was like, so basically what we do is I'll tell this guy, make me Tetris by tomorrow. Just make Tetris. <laughs> so like that was the way that That's they intense. got people well, on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right? That's not an easy one. For sure. yeah, I mean, you, can, you can make it so complicated, so, <laughs> too, especially if they're like, make it tomorrow. And you're like, oh, my gosh, right. I don't press them. Yeah, yeah. So I would say make Pac-Man. Make the very, make one Pac-Man level. Yeah, you know? we're talking about like a day or um, like just make it in whenever you finish it. Um, is there usually like a time limit for these or? No, it's just a challenge to give them something um, to do if they feel like they need. Just a challenge. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say try not to spend more than a week on it, but make a Pac-Man based game. You can use your own art if you want. If you get creative with it, that's more power to you. But just like the very basic gameplay elements of Pac-Man, um, and you know, just it's a tiny little game. But if you just make it really polished, I think that's a really, really good thing to do. Definitely. Yeah, because it seems like it could be complicated, but really, it's just like you have an object. When the Pac-Man thing goes over it, it collects it, and then you have objects to follow it through, like um. Yeah, pathfinding, and that's it. And then you just like slowly build that right. together. But it just seems so complicated until you do it. And I think that's a great challenge to get people to like keep thinking about right. that. Like, yeah, how can I make Pac Man? And then like, oh, if I could do Pac Man, then for sure. do something way more complicated. And it's like, yeah, it basically follows the same pattern, right? So, yeah, and that's a great challenge, absolutely. Yes, indeed. All right, awesome, cool. Well, so we're at the end. Uh, I just want to say thank you for coming on, Kyle. This has been amazing, learned a lot. Hopefully, everybody checks out Hacks, yeah, and uh, absolutely, yeah. For and sure, so, yeah, uh, check it out. It We're on side quest. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, um, I like to end it off with have, passing the mic to you, doing any last minute shout outs, quotes, whatever you want to end it off. And the mic's all yours. And thanks again for coming on. All right. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah. Just go check out Hacks if you have an Oculus Quest headset. Um, it's on side quest VR. We're also on the Oculus App Lab, which is pretty exciting. Um, and yeah, keep coding, keep making games. Well, that's it. Thanks for listening. You can find all courses at GameDev.tv or in the show notes at a discounted price. Get started with your game development journey today.